Welcome to YLEC 3844, Engineering Management and Society. This topic is organization structure. So if you have a chance to do internships or in the future when you graduate and work in a company, the first thing you want to know is that, where are you? What's the position in the hierarchy of the company? Whether you are on the top or at the bottom or in the middle of this hierarchy, so this is the first questions you may ask. So you may ask, who are your boss? Who will work under you or who will be your working peer? This is a typical organization structures and usually we have uh, inverted three organizations. There's a top CEO and then with some vice presidents, director or senior managers and then with the middle managers and then at the bottom will be a pool of staff. There are four reasons why we need an organization structures. First, we need a framework to link everybody together so that they can know how to communicate, who reports to whom, and who make the decisions, and so on. We can also group different tasks and activities according to the functions and objectives, and divide them into different groups or departments. And also, we can make use of these organization structures to allocate the responsibility. Who make the decisions? When there's any problem, who should take the accountability or who should be blamed? And then finally, it's also a good provision of power and of authorities so that we can delegate some authorities to staff at certain level. For example, procurement, under how much within the budgets the middle manager can make the decisions or up to what certain amount, maybe over a million of procurement has to be approved by the board of director. So different level of delegations of power and authorities and also be achieved by a proper organization structure. So there are three major structures that you need to understand and will be introduced in this course. They are namely functional structures, divisional structures and matrix structure. For the functional structure, we group the employee with different functions together in a department. For example, engineering departments, we group all the engineers together and the accountants, we have the accounting unit where most of the accountants, auditors will sit together. So the company can be departmentalizations by the different functions and process like the engineering process or the packaging process or the functions like printing functions or the auditing functions and so on. So there's pros and cons of this type of organization structures. The advantages is that we can group all the experts in the particular functions together. So the operations within that functions unit will be very efficient. However, there may be lack of communications between different functional units and therefore the accounting unit may not know what is going on in the engineering unit or the packaging unit, logistic unit may not know what is doing in the marketing unit. So the communications between these different units may be not very efficient. And this type of organization structures is good for those standard products. So they do repeated work. There's not much change. So we can group all those experts in the particular functions together in the unit. And therefore the coordination and specializations of the task can be centralized in this functional structure. Another organization structure is called divisional structure. So we divide the company by different divisions or sometimes we call this the product structure. We divide the company by different product or service. Some division structures may also be divided by the geographic locations. For example, some power company or service company may divide Hong Kong into different regions. Northwest, Northeast, Southeast, Southwest, Hong Kong Island, Nantau Island. They divide Hong Kong into different clusters so that different divisions will look after a particular customer. Or it can be divided by the product and service. So some big company, like the IT product companies, 
for example, HP, IBM, they divided the company by different division according to the product. There is a product line on iPad or another product line on printer or the desktop. So there are different teams of people looking after a particular product. In each of these divisions, they have their own sales and engineers, marketing, accountant and so on. So each unit looks like a small company. And the advantages is that they are highly specialized. In the iPad team, they know the best about the functionalities and the structures and the marketing issues of this type of tablet PC. In the printer team, they know the best about the desk jack or laser print or the mechanisms or the maintenance of all these products. Okay, so they are very specialized in the particular product. However, a lot of stuff will be required. Imagine in a company, they have N different numbers of products and in each unit, they need M different numbers of staff to look after this product. So the total number of staff will be the product of these two numbers, M multiplied by N. Okay, quite a large number. If the number of product line is too many, then the scale of the company has to be very big. And also lack of flexibility. If the staff only know the best about the printer, so what if they don't want to obsolete or discontinue the product line? then it will be very difficult for the staff to move to another team because their expertise are too specialized. So nowadays, many companies may run in this structure called matrix structure, which is a combination of functional structures and divisional structures. So these matrix structures can combine the best of both sides and take the advantages of the strength of both sides and also reduce the weaknesses of functional structures and divisional structures. There are different functional departments, the research unit, production, sales, and finance, and so on. And then in each product line, they will form a product team, okay, product A, B, C. And different product team, A, B, C, will pull different resources from different functional units. For example, this product B need two researchers who are the experts in the tablet PC, okay, the, we need a battery expert and also we need a screen expert. So these two engineers will join this team. On the other hand, another product team, product C, require different types of expertise, okay, but they also need a battery expert. So the same expert will work on two teams, B and C, while they can also pull other resources. For example, this sells is an expert in the domestic market. Another sales is an expert in the corporate market. So different team may pull different people to join the team. And the actual structure will look like this, different functional unit. And there is another unit called the project managing unit. This unit will manage different project managers or project coordinators to run the projects. And the project managers will then pull resources to form this project team. This type of matrix structures do have a few advantages. The project manager do have the authorities to select the best personnel to join the teams so that they are the experts in certain field in order to maximize the workforce. Another advantage of this type of company is that they can be very dynamic because they have a pool of experts and they are not dedicated to any particular product. They can be shared among different product lines. And the project manager do have the authorities to arrange all these resources in order to complete the project in a specific deadline and budget. However, there are some problems with these matrix structures. A staff in this matrix should report to the functional head and also the product manager. In this case, they have to report to two supervisors or each supervisor cannot fully manage the time and resources of a staff then the problem may arise let's see the following scenario I will then finish this marketing report by the end of the day I'm sorry I'm busy. 
Dr. Vaughn asked me to finish the lab test verification. I have no time to wait for you. Sorry. Hi, Wilton. There is some problem with the lab test result. Can you verify it again? Oh, I'm sorry, Dr. Vaughn. Our boss is asking me to finish the marketing report by the end of the day. I'm afraid that I cannot work for you. The major disadvantages of this major structure is that the reporting line may be unclear. A staff is supposed to report to the functional head and also the project manager. Sometimes the employee may be confused of who are the real boss, who should they listen to. Major structure also have a disadvantage is that the employees may not know who should they listen to. There are two boss or three boss. Then who are the big boss? What if the two boss have different directions and the staff are asked to do different things? Then they will sometimes create some conflicts between departments and also the two bosses. Moreover, we need to increase the number of managers. For staff, instead of using one manager to look after him, they will need two. So the cost will be doubled. And it may be difficult to monitor the project as well because there's too many independency and there are too many decision makers and supervisors. This is a very famous case about the failure of major structures. Trace back to year 1995, one of the oldest merchant banks in the UK called Balings Bank. This bank bankrupts because of a failure in the investment. And this investment was just done by a single staff. And this staff should report to the UK headquarters. And he is assigned to the Singapore branch office. The supervisor and the boss in the Singapore branch office did not know what this guy is doing because he kept saying that he's reporting to the headquarters. And the UK headquarters supervisor also didn't know what this guy is doing because he also report to the headquarters that he is reporting to the Singapore branch office supervisor. Therefore, he can do whatever trading he want. And at the end, he do a lot of risky trading and finally the stock market collapse. And then the whole company, because of the debt, goes to bankruptcy. This is a big lesson to all of us. If the reporting line is unclear, and if there's no effective supervision of the staff, then the company is quite risky. Some companies may be fundamentally, they are functional structures, but they may sometimes also form special projects. So this type of companies may also be considered as a type of weak matrix. If the company structures is somehow more biased towards the functional structures, we call this a weak matrix. When the company structures are more look like divisional or project structures, then we call it a strong matrix. When it's somewhere in between, we call it a balanced matrix. The project manager have limited authorities to control the resources. He need to ask the resources from different functional managers to oversee the core functional aspects of the project, while the functional managers still control the resources. On the other hand, for the strong or project matrix, the project manager is responsible for the whole project. So he has the final authorities to control the resources of the projects. And the functional managers will provide the technical expertise and the necessary resource to support the project managers to accomplish the work. And for balance matrix, so the project manager is assigned to oversee the projects and the power is shared equally between the project manager and also the functional manager. The pros of balanced matrix is that the advantages of both functional structures and divisional structures can be achieved. But if the project manager and the functional manager share the equal power, sometimes conflicts may be created and they may fight for power. And when there are disagreements between the two boss, it will be very difficult for the staff working under them. In modern organization management, we try to reduce the number of hierarchies. Let's learn from Steve Jobs how he managed Apple. One of the keys to Apple is Apple's an incredibly collaborative company. 
And so, you know how many committees we have at Apple? No. Zero. We have no committees. No committees. We are a very, we are organized like a startup. One person's in charge of iPhone OS software. One person's in charge of Mac hardware. One person's in charge of iPhone hardware engineering. Another person's in charge of worldwide marketing. Another person's in charge of operations. It's, we're organized like a startup. We're the biggest startup on the planet. And we all meet for three hours once a week and we talk about everything we're doing, the whole business. And there's tremendous teamwork at the top of the company, which filters down to tremendous teamwork throughout the company. And teamwork is dependent on trusting the other folks to come through with their part without watching them all the time, but trusting that they're going to come through with their parts. And that's what we do really well. And we're great at figuring out how to divide things up into these great teams that we have and all work on the same thing touch bases frequently, and bring it all together into a product. We do that really well. And so what I do all day is meet with teams of people and work on ideas and solve problems to make new products, to make new marketing programs, whatever it is. And are people willing to tell you you're wrong? <laughs> yeah. I mean, other than snarky journalists. I mean, people that oh, work Oh, yeah. For no, we have wonderful arguments. And do you win them all? Or? Oh, no, I wish I did. <laughs> no, see, you can't. <laughs> if you want to hire great people and have them stay working for you, you have to let them make a lot of decisions, and you have to, you have to be run by ideas, not hierarchy. The best ideas have to win. So, Otherwise, good people don't stay. But you must be more than a facilitator who runs meetings. You obviously contribute your own ideas. I contribute ideas, sure. Well, I, why would I be there if I didn't? In the video, we learned the advantages of a flat structure. Instead of a hierarchy with many different layers, so we reduce the number of layers in the hierarchy so that the junior staff can report or give suggestions to the top management in an easier way. And because the distance between the junior or the franchise staff with the top management is shortened, so it's easier for any suggestions or response to be communicated within the company. But when the company grows and increases the size, hire more employees, then we need to hire some middle management to look after the staff and introduce more middle layer. But the disadvantages of this higher or more complex hierarchy is the bureaucracy. But when the company size is too big and the structure is too complicated, then bureaucracy may be introduced and also staff may not know who they should report to and this will also create some obstacle for the internal communications. And when there is any change in the market, so the company is very reluctant to any market change or the response to the change will be slower. The recent trend in organizational structures development is moving towards globalization and because companies need to face the competitions from competitors all over the world and the customer are nowadays more demanding. So the trend is going to be a factor organizations so that the company can react to those market change more quickly and also less hierarchy and more fluid so that they can make the decisions or make the change in their production line or in the decision making process more quickly. In the future, you work in a company, you need to figure out what will be the organization structures of this company and what is the best way to adapt to the culture of this company.